In this lesson, we'll take a look at uh, two means that are matched up in some way. Uh, they oftentimes referred to as matched pairs, dependent dependent samples. Um, requirements um, to do the testing uh, of claims: uh, samples obtained using simple random sampling or through randomized experiment. Sample data are matched pairs. Differences are normally disputed with no outliers or the sample size n is large. n is greater than or equal to 30. And sample values are independent. Uh, sample size is no more than 5% of population size. Now we're going to skip over the next slides and go down to our claim. We'll come back to those. Okay, our first problem here. Given uh, Given the reaction time to red and reaction time to blue, is the reaction time to red greater than the reaction time to blue? So what they're saying is uh, mu sub red, the mean of our red, is greater than the reaction time to blue. So greater than uh, the mean of the blue. And down below here is where we have our raw data. Um, so for our first match one, this this would be like you're testing somebody's reaction time to color. How fast do they react to red? How fast do they react to blue? And we got six um, p six um, uh, subjects total. Um, okay, so that's what they're asking. Now we want to write this as in terms of differences. So I'm going to take the mu sub blue to the left side. So that gives us mu sub red minus mu sub blue greater than zero. And we want to write this as differences, so that's a move over differences is greater than zero. And this book uses the convention of just putting a, a D there. So the claim they're giving us is mu sub D is greater than zero. Now it says use match uh, pairs data below. Um, now total there's six um, sets. So there's not 12 total. You count how many matched pairs there are. And it says alpha is 5%. And it says uh, assume the difference is approximately normal with no outliers. Let's look at the classical approach using the TI3, TI4. So I'm going to go back up here. Our classical approach using the TI3, TI4. Uh, step one, write down a shortened version of the claim. Well, we did that. Uh, it should always be written in terms of differences, by the way, so you should always do this setup. Now, in case you're wondering, our first population is whichever one we run across first in our problem. So we'll say that red is number one and blue is number two. Just by convention. And to come up with an alternate hypothesis, so we've got mu sub d greater than goes on h1. So a claim is going to actually match h1. And this will be mu sub d, if that's greater than, this will be less than or equal to. Now, most books will put in equals here, but I like this convention because that uh, you can easily think of them as opposites of each other. Okay, draw the picture, split alpha into the tails. Uh, we have a greater than on h1, so greater than on h1 says right tail. So we have that. Now it says split alpha into your tails. Alpha is 5%. We only got one tail, so I'll put the entire 5% there. And I'll put 95% over here. Um, okay, it says put first list in L1, second list in L2. Uh, highlight L3 and enter L1 minus L2. Now when it says first list, we're talking about our first population, which is the red. Because we put red first here. Now if blue was first, like if I put blue here and then red over here, this would have changed to a less than. Um, then whichever one we put first is where we're going to put into L1. So um, let me go back down to my data. I go into stat, um, go into edit, and um, in L1 we're going to put our red values. So I got 0.425. I got 0 0.511. 0 0.712. 0 0.651. 0 0.614. 
0.499 and 0 0.505. I'll double check my numbers. 425, 511, 712, 651, 499, 505. Okay, so I'm going to write her over to L2, and that's where we'll put our second um, list, uh, the blue values. So 0 .404, uh, 0 .622, 0 .605, 0 .719, 0 .813 and .350 and let me double check my numbers 404, 622, 605, 719, 813.35 okay now look where my cursor is I'm gonna right arrow over now you should have the same same mount in here if there's six items here it should be six items there our cursor is right here I'm gonna press my up arrow now notice we're in L3. Keep that in mind. Now this is where I'm going to type my formula. So if I come up here, it says um, highlight L3. That's what we did when we did an up arrow. We highlighted L3. And we're going to enter L1 minus L2. We're going to press enter on that also. So I'm going to do a second 1 minus second 2. Now you should see the formula appearing down here at the bottom. It should say L3 is equal to L1 minus L2. If you don't have that, you probably didn't highlight L3 before you started typing that. And then we'll press enter. And this will put our differences here. So it's basically just subtracting these. 0.425 minus 0.404. So nothing real exciting what it did there. Then we want to make sure we exit out. So we'll do second mode. Okay. Now to find our critical values, it says use the t-distribution table. If you remember the t-distribution, we need our degrees of freedom, which is 1 less than n. So it's n minus 1. So a degree of freedom is going to be 6 minus 1 or 5. And let's go look this up. Now remember our t-distribution says area and right tail in this particular book. It should actually say area and one tail because you may not have a right tail. Uh, area and one tail is 0.05 and our degree of freedom is 5. So 0.05 and degree of freedom is 5. We got 2.015. Now if your critical value is on the right side with your t-distribution table, it should be a positive value. If your uh, critical value is on the left side, it should be negative. So if this was on the left side, it would be a negative 2.015. Okay. Uh, find your test statistic. Use t-test. So we're going to press stat. I'll um, go over to test. I'm going to down arrow to t-test. Press enter on it. Now we don't want summary statistics, we want raw data. So I'm going to left arrow over to data and press enter on it. Now moose of not. This is our number off of our claim. Well, if we come back over here, our number off of our claim is zero. It'll always be zero for match pair problems for your claim. Now our list. This is where we put our differences at. Remember it was L3 and I, I specifically point that out. Um, so we're going to put L3 here. So we'll do second 3 to put an L3. Now later on when you need to go do this test for a different claim and you put your data in L1, be sure you change that back to L1. Frequency is fine as 1, you don't need to change that. The uh, symbol on H1 was a greater than. So I'm going to right arrow over, put my flashing cursor on the greater than and press enter. Then I'll down arrow to calculate and press enter. Now the T equals is our test statistic. So we got t is equal to negative 0 0.50. Well, this is the number line. Um, this would fall over here somewhere. So for our conclusion, this says if your test statistic falls in tail, it doesn't. 
If test statistic falls in main body, which it does, it says you accept H0. Now if you accept H0, that means you reject H1. These are opposites of each other. And since our claim matches H1, whatever we say about H1 is what we say about our claim. So we'll reject our claim. Now most books do not use the word accept. I like to use accept and reject because it clicks better with students uh, to have them in, in those words for some reason. Most books will say do not reject. Accept is kind of a strong word and do not reject is uh, actually more or um, it's uh, more accurate. Um, p-value, where's that at? Let's take a look at the p-value. Most of the p-value is the same. Write down a shortened version of the claim, did that. Come up with your null and alternate hypothesis, did that. See if your claim matches H0 or H1, did that. Put your first list in L1, second list in L2, highlight L3, and enter L1 mi minus L2. You do have to press an enter there, and then exit out. And then your find your p-value. Okay, so if I was using the p-value approach here, our p-value will be on screen, uh, 0 0.68. It's a large p-value. And this says if your p-value is less than alpha, it's not. If p-value is greater than alpha, alpha was 5%, this is 68%, so it's greater than. It says we accept H0. So uh, we accept H0, reject H1, and then reject our claim. So whether you're using um, the classical approach or the p-value approach with technology, you kind of use uh, the same concepts. Um, okay, I'm not going to go over the by hand stuff. This is uh, videos mainly for just showing how to use it on the calculator. Um, we got TA3, TA4 instructions. This is uh, to find a confidence interval. Uh, so, in confidence interval, the differences. So, so put first list in L1, second list in L2. We did that. Highlight L3 and enter L1 minus L2. Press enter and then exit out. Okay. Now this is how we're going to do our um, our confidence interval. So we're going to press our stat button. Go over to tests. And it tells us to choose T interval. Which uh, I think is number 8. But let me see. Yep, number 8. Press enter on it. And uh, we want raw data again because we put our data in L1 and L2 and put our differences in L3. So I'm going to down arrow to uh, list. And this should be L3. If it isn't, again, do second 3 to put L3 there. Uh, one's fine there. Uh, confidence level. Um, our second example here uses the same data. It says construct a 99% confidence interval. So we're going to put in 0.99. And then we'll choose calculate. And let me write this down. So a 99% confidence interval is going to be uh, negative 0.3145 and point, I'll take this to four decimal places to 0.2445. So we're 99 percent confidence that the true value of the differences between the red and the blue uh, fall somewhere in this range. So that's, uh, that's how you'd interpret that. And that's how you use technology to work with mashed pairs.